evening. How's everybody doing? Let me hear you. Are you with me? All right, all right, all right. So we have a very special entrance uh, coming up here shortly, but I'd like to introduce my friend Vito A. Pampalona. Vito Pampalona is a decorated combat disabled veteran who served in Vietnam in 1966 and 1967. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for Heroism. He has supported our returning wounded veterans and their families since 2004 and has raised over $2.5 million in addition to awarding over 12 million school scholarships. Vito sits on the board of the Yellow Ribbon Fund and is a trustee for the Colorado Technical University. He's also the author of Real Americans, Don't Tread on Me. Please welcome United States Army Sergeant Vito Pampolo. Yeah, I got one with Thank you, Z, and, and uh, a special thanks to Z and, and Sam Kassab, who uh, open up their house every year for this great event. Uh, they're true patriotic Americans. It's people like that and all the people like you here who make a difference. Especially today in the climate that we see in our country uh, and attitudes against, against our country, it's refreshing to see real Americans, dedicated Americans, who will make a difference. And your president's support here is appreciated. Thank you very much. We've got the arrival coming of some very special honored veterans. I'm going to introduce to you, it's my honor, to introduce to you Brigadier General Doug Slocum, United States Air Force, and he is going to introduce the incoming very special veterans. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody. What a wonderful evening. I mean, temperature, no sun, nice breeze, and a beautiful place. It's a great time to get together uh, to honor primarily our veterans here today. So let me start off. Everyone who's a veteran, raise your hand. Let's see you, everyone who's a veteran out here. Now, everybody, hug a veteran. No, wait, wait, wait. Social distancing. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right? But you can fist bump them or whatever you can with the proper social distancing. But truly, uh, it's always great to come here to Sam's because what I always feel when I'm in this place is a, a love for our country and a love for what this country stands for. And what we're here celebrating tonight, what we're raising money for, is to celebrate those who have sacrificed so much for the freedoms that we're able to enjoy. So really, this is our opportunity to pay tribute to those who sacrificed, those who serve, those who are serving, and for all of you who don't know it yet, that are going to serve as we go forward. This is a wonderful republic. It's worth defending, and it's worth everything that we're doing here tonight. I just want to take the opportunity to thank you for being here. Sam, Z, uh, and everybody on the team that made this happen, a class act as always. Thank you very much. So let's take this opportunity to enjoy each other, to enjoy the fun, but really to celebrate our veterans and have a good time tonight. I'm General Doug Slocum, retired. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, General. And I'd like to welcome our Sheriff, Sheriff Mike Bouchard is here. Come on up, Sheriff, say hello, say a few words. Thank you. Um, well, first, thanks everybody for being here supporting the military. As I was pulling up, I hung up with my son, who's the XO for a company in the 101st Airborne. So uh, he is uh, not with us tonight, but I told him where I was coming and, and that people all across this country support the men and women of the military doing the tough job and the job of protecting our freedom and safety every day anywhere on this planet. And for all the veterans that are here and all those that are not with us today, God bless you. Thank you for providing everything that you do to us in your in your sweats and in your love. Freedom is not free. And you defended it when it needed it, and we need to defend it today. And that's not just on the military, that's all of us. That's all of us. We have to make sure that we continue to support this nation 
under the principles that it was founded. So God bless all of you for being here. I'm honored to be your sheriff. I appreciate the men and women of the military, police, fire service, and all of the community that supports those that are asked to do a tough job every day. God bless you. Thanks for doing this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third annual Salute Our Warriors You're event. Okay. On behalf of my family, we want to say thank you all for coming. We're very excited and have an, an honor to have you all here with us this evening to honor our veterans. So, did these guys know how to make an entrance or what? Huh? <laughs> that was very, very wonderful. Um, tonight we have with us the North Oakland VFW Post 334 Honor Guard is here, commanded by Marvin Petty. Thank you guys. And the AMVETS are here too. The American Veteran AMVETS Post 2006 from Milford, Michigan. Commander Bob Shemansky is here, honoring our country and all those who have served or are currently serving home and abroad in the armed forces of the best country of the world, the United States of America. Now I need my kids, where's my kids? Come on up here kids, where's my nephews? Come on up here nephews. Well you know how to make an entrance too, don't you? All right, we're gonna ask the kids to lead us in the Pledge of the Allegiance, okay? Penelope, my daughter, over here. Right here, girl. Come on, guys. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with with liberty and justice for all. Let's hear it for the kids. Thank you, guys. For me, it's really a great occasion to explain my thanks to God for this great country. I am immigrant. I have been here only 33 years. On July 13, I had been only 33 years in this country. My relationship with Sam goes back to our village, Til Kepel. And the way I see this country and the many blessings God has given to it, and especially the spirit of sacrifice that God implanted in the hearts of many women and men to give themselves to defend this country, to make this country really great, and to be a country as example for many countries in the world. Liberty and justice for all. This is what we are working for, and this is what brought me to this country. And as a priest, I ask God to bless it, to bless its president, and also to bless all the people, men, women, who really serve this country and the army and all the branches of the uh, army. I don't know them very well, I'm very sorry. But all of us, we are soldiers in this great country. Thank you, God, for bringing us together. People from different faiths, from different cultures, from different political backgrounds. Let us have only one hand, one goal, one aim, this country to be a safe haven for its citizens and also for all the people in the world who are looking to United States to be a role model for them. Thank you God for our veterans and thank God for this gathering. Amen. Uh, 
Uncle Sam, uh, as we gather here, he always makes it a point for all of us to remember all of those who have gone before us, for the many great men and women who died for our freedom, who died for the generation of Father Boji who came here, for our parents' generation who came here from all around the world to have freedom and to be able to raise up our community here in Detroit and all of America. So we always remember those fallen soldiers who have gone before us. And now Father Bochi will lead us in a hymn that is for all those who have been deceased. <laughs> روح دعود بشلامة دكثت لذبقى وحشة لا أوقان أو غبنوثة إلا خاي أبدين أيم It means that God we ask you to raise the souls of all our deceased brothers and sisters in eternal life. God bless America. Thank you, Father. All right, now uh, I would like to welcome our mayor to say a few words. But first, let me tell you a little bit about our mayor here in Rochester Hills. Brian K. Barnett has served as the Rochester Hills mayor for more than 14 years. He's the longest serving mayor in history of the city. Time of his election, he was also the youngest mayor in the United States of a city with a population over 50,000. In 2015, Barnett won a historic third mayoral term as a write-in candidate, earning the largest write-in win in a general election in the history of the state of Michigan. In 2019, he was re-elected for a fourth term, receiving an, uh, receiving an overwhelming majority of write-in votes once again. Mayor Barnett's administration has received local, national, and international recognition for innovation, fiscal responsibility, operational excellence, and environmental leadership. During his tenure, Rochester Hills has been recognized as one of the top places to live in America, numerous times by sources like Money Magazine, CNN. In addition, Rochester Hills has held <laughs> the title for the safest city in Michigan for the past three years. <laughs> uh, Mayor Barnett's a frequent national speaker on topics including innovative government, long-term sustainability, and economic development, and has represented Rochester Hills and Southeast Michigan on multiple international delegations. On July 1st, 2019, Mayor Barnett was named the 77th President of the United States Conference of Mayors, the official nonpartisan organization of cities with populations of 30,000 or more. Barnett is one of only six mayors from Michigan to ever become the president of the conference since its inception in 1932. As president, Mayor Barnett focused on three priorities for the nation's cities, infrastructure, innovation, and inclusion. And in this role, he was also advocating nationally about the importance of cities and advocate for the priorities of local government. Mayor Barnett likes long walks on the beach. Oh, that's a different. <laughs> oh, okay. Taylor Swift, wait, wait, okay. No, Mayor Barnett's vision for Rochester Hills is to be the preeminent place in America to live, work, and raise a family, and he's a wonderful mayor and a great friend of mine. Please welcome Mayor Brian Barnett. Let me welcome all of you to the city of Rochester Hills and to our best example of middle income housing here. I joke, but I am a massive fan, and I assume that I'm not alone in having a tremendous amount of respect for Sam, Faye, Ziad, Calvin, and Cassidy Kassab. That is a family. I've been privileged to be friends and in their orbit for probably over a decade, and I can tell you, and most of you are here because of a relationship that you have with one of them. 
I've never seen a family so uh, tight, so focused on four things, family, faith, friendship, and freedom. And if you subscribe to any one of those, you're part of the Kassab family. And I've been blessed to be part of that family. You Absolutely. We're here at the Danny Kassab estate. And uh, if you know anything about their family, you know how they united around their brother and his story. And it's not just a story about the Kassabs, really it's a much larger story, really. It's about folks that reunite about around something that's important. And I think that's what all of us do as Americans, right? There are a lot of people telling you a lot of things that are wrong with this country right now. And we could listen to those folks on just about any network and get discouraged. But if you wanna know what's right with America, Look at the folks behind me and learn their story and watch how they've stood up for our freedom every single chance their name has been called. Every time. I've... My role as America's mayor over the last year, I've traveled to, I think, 15 countries in the last 12 months. And let me tell you something, despite what those folks on TV tell you what's wrong with America, when I'm across the world and in Europe or in Asia or in Africa, you know what they're talking about? They're watching American television. They're reading American authors. They desire to have their children study in American universities. They love the American culture. It is what they dream of and desire for the most part. And it's because they, I think, know what we know as Americans, that while not perfect, we have a really, really good republic, led by good people who desire to do the best they can. And again, while no one is perfect, I have never been, despite the time and the climate, more proud to be an American than I am today. Does anyone agree with that? So while we stand here challenged like we've never been before with the worst pandemic in 100 years and the worst economic climate in 90 and the worst social unrest in 50, we have two choices. We could succumb to the voices on television and, and, and believe that there's nothing left here for us to, to save or to fight for. Or we could, like these folks behind me, when their name was called and their number was called, stand up for what we believe in, stand up for the values of this country, stand up for the reason that we are so proud to salute that flag behind me, not on a knee, but proudly and loudly proud for everything that this country stands for. I am so blessed to be here. Thank you to the Kassab family. Thank you to all of you who are, have served all of us and for all of you being here for your support, uh, both financial and otherwise, of this organization that supports those who've given everything for our nation. May God bless you and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Barnett. I remember something my dad told me when I was young. He said, uh, he said, when someone enlists to be in the military, it's like they write a, a check to the country. And the price of that check is their life. And I'm willing to give it for this country, for that flag, for this freedom. So thank you guys all for giving the offer. For, for being here for that. Commander Shemansky. Uh, if there's any veterans, or I should say all veterans that are uh, in the stand right now, when we're lowering the flag, please render a hand salute.
we all own wear the uniform. I give this flag to you. Thank you for all your support, your caring, and your donations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I honor the flag and I receive it. Thank you. And thank you for your service. You want to say anything, Bob? Very short, I'm saying thank you for all the money for and for your service for this company. I love you all and thank you for your support. And as we prepare to bring the new flag over here, which has become a tradition at this house, we have been uh, having an event like this for almost nine years, started off with cigars and some close friends, patriots, like-minded, like my father. Um, and this has turned into a wonderful annual gathering, and now this is our almost eighth or ninth year, but our third year um, annually working with the Fallen and Ruby Soldiers Fund. So as we prepare to uh, raise the flag, uh, let's just, I want to give a shout out to Mark Casa and Slight Return, who, who wrote that original song, Hail to the Heroes, that you heard in the back. That's an original song, and he'll be playing the uh, Star Spangled Banner for us. So thank you, Mark. Yeah, Slight Return. Yeah, yeah check out Slight Return. Yeah. Mason Norris from Mark Hass, a slight return. Thank you, Mike. That was awesome. I'd like to welcome my good friend, Mark Tisdale, candidate for the State House of Representatives to sing America the Beautiful. Hi, Mark. Or God Bless America. Whatever you got. You know what? Surprise us, Mark. Sit down. I got some great visuals. In the world. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, to honor all the veterans that have given their lives for our country, we're going to be playing taps. Please be quiet. Veterans, once again, please hand salute. Bugler, sound off. Freeze it. Pull it.
Mark Tisdale. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Let me tell you the story of Rosie the Riveter, Clarabelle Hunter Doubtly. Clara was born in 1921 in Detroit, Michigan during World War II. Clara worked for Briggs Manufacturing in Detroit as a riveter. Briggs, during the war, employed nearly 36,000 people. They made aircraft, gun turrets, doors, wing components, and the bomb bay doors and tank holes, tank hulls as well as ambulances. They supplied these for the aircraft, the B-26, the B-17, as well as the B-29. During World War II, Briggs, so you know, was a major supplier manufacturing over $1 billion of sheet metal in the 20s. $1 billion of sheet metal in the 20s. Clara started working there approximately late 1941, early 1942, and she worked as a riveter. You guys know what Rosie the Riveter is, right? All right? She remembers she had to go to riveting school. She says she made $1.99 an hour, which was a lot of money, and she worked at Briggs until the war ended in 1945. Briggs actually used to own the Detroit Tigers until 1952. But Clara reports it was good pay and all light working there. She is approaching 100 years old. Please give a round of applause for Clara Bell Hunter Dowling. Make some noise for Clarabelle Hunter Dolly, one of the original Rosies. And their daughter is called Rosebuds. Keep in memory of the Rosies alive. Thank you so much for all you do and continue. Would you like to say anything to you? No, just thank you all for inviting me. It is a nice affair and I enjoy it very much. Enjoyment is the best thing you can have with a good smile nowadays. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Make some noise for Clara. And the Rosebuds are here. All right, this time I want to invite the board members of the Fallen and Wounded Soldiers Fund, Steve Hernandez, Chris Cornelius, and Jeremy Fick to say a few words about this organization. Come on up, fellas. Oh, Chris is here. All right, there's Jeremy. Steve Bubbles is here, and who? And Doug Wade, thank you very much for being here. On behalf of the Fallen and Wounded Soldiers Fund, we'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. Um, we'd like to thank uh, the Kassab family for once again opening up your house, all your generosity. Uh, this year is a, uh, is a tough year for fundraising, and we still have a need. So um, your generosity is more important than ever. Uh, we help out with, with so much uh, immediate needs. A lot of times, uh, veterans that, that serve uh, are injured and those injuries prevent them from working or being able to work full time and that's where our organization is able to step in 
a lot of times it's immediate needs. It could be food, it could be shelter, it could be an eviction. And uh, I know I'm not trying to take it all because there's a, there's a lot we can talk about. You want me to just keep on going or? So with, with it, we get a request and within 24 hours we respond to that request. All right. And then within two or three days, if the request meets the criteria, we cut a check. So you can imagine somebody getting evicted, how fast they're going to need funds, right? And these are veterans that are placed in the spot at no fault of their own. Um, we've helped out with food, with diapers, literally everything, immediate needs. Um, we are a 501c3. We're an all-volunteer organization. 97 cents of all direct contributions goes right to the troops. And I... So this year, your generosity, it means more than ever before. We we're down 75% in contributions. So we thank you, Sam, and thank you, Senator Danaskis, the host committee, all our sponsors, and all you for just coming out and recognizing the sacrifices our troops made. Thank you so much. Nobody else want to say nothing? Good? Chris, you know. Hey, come on, Jeremy, say something. Come on, come on. You guys are already up here. You're all dressed up. The, the only thing that we can say uh, on behalf of the board, fallen and wounded soldiers, um, we've got vets here. Steve served, I served. Uh, thank you from the bottom of our heart for your generosity. Chris, a veteran as well. Uh, Doug, veteran. And uh, Steve, law enforcement, thank you. So uh, I'm just going to hand it over to the man of the hour right here, Z. But thank you again, everyone, for being here and your generosity. You guys, this is a wonderful, wonderful organization. As you heard, 97% of all contributions go directly toward the mission. That means you guys work for free to make it happen because they believe in the mission. And thank you guys for believing it as well. All right, I want to recognize some of our men in blue. Thank you, gentlemen. Some of our men in blue, we've got some police chiefs here with us tonight. Chief of Police for Holly, and also a member of our host committee, Chief Jerry Narsh is here. Hi, Lord Chief, how are you? The Chief of Police for Ferndale is here. Vinny Palazzolo is here with us tonight. Thank you, Vinny, for being here. Our Oakland County Sheriff, Michael Bouchard, is here. Thank you for coming, Sheriff. And thank you for all, uh, to all our men and women in blue for all you do to keep us safe. We appreciate it. You know, this is one big team. The I mean, you guys taking a lot of heat right now, but the police and the military and all branches are one big team. So um, I heard a little saying that the, the military, that you guys got the away game. Police, they got the home game, so. <laughs> all right. Now, I'd like to invite back to the stage from the Yellow Ribbon Fund, Vito Pampolona, as well as United States General and Congressional Candidate Doug Odie Slocum, as well as Captain Joe Mastro Mateo. Please, guys, if you can have you come to the stage, I appreciate that. And they're going to um, allow us to, they're going to help present the gifts to tonight's special honorees as we move into our award segment. All right, our first honoree tonight, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about Ronald Bud Abbott, Corporal, United States Army Air Corp, World War II. Yeah, I like that enthusiasm. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Bud. Bud Abbott enlisted in the Air Corp in 1943 because he wanted to be a fighter pilot. Corporal Abbott was stationed for flight training in Amarillo, Texas, Wichita Falls, and Stewart Field, where he flew the AT-6 Stearman and began training to fly the famed P-51 fighter plane when the war ended. After the war, Bud attended college majoring in economics. Bud worked for Remington, 
Rand, where they developed the world's first computer and Bud sold it. The computer is now located at the Smithsonian Institute of Arts. <laughs> Since his military flight days, Bud continued his love of flight, owning and flying his own airplane and helicopter. Bud has made many friends in the World War II fighter bomber pilot community and was befriended by the original Doolittle Raider pilots. His daughter, Jill Von Rotat, who's also here with us tonight, is a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force, and we are all proud of him and his family. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Please help me welcome Corporal Bud Abbott. welcomes all new men and the men get sleep and at night and dream of home Christopher Columbus said that to his men I'd like to say a few words to a lot of my friends who are no longer here on both sides that I met during the fighter pilots convention these fellows wore their uniform proudly they might not have liked the politicians that got them into this world war, but they deserve to be thought of. And God, there was just so many. Anyhow, my heart goes out to them and what they gave to the service of their country and to our country. Thank you very much, bud. And we'd like to present you with this as General said it, a big ass knife. <laughs> he said it, I just repeated it just so we're all on the same page there with that. For our second honoree tonight, let me tell you a little bit about Randy Stetson, Private First Class, United States Army, Vietnam. Private First Class Stetson is a member of the North Oakland VFW Post 334. On March 9, 1969, Private First Class Stetson was serving as a radio operator with the Aero Rifle Platoon Air Cavalry Troop, the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment in Vietnam. His platoon entered a fortified base camp when a flank squad came under intense hostile fire. Private First Class Stetson placed suppressive fire on enemy, and on enemy positions so his comrades could continue the assault. As the advancing U.S. element moved on the enemy, three men were seriously wounded and the rest pinned down by a hail of enemy automatic weapons fire. Disregarding his own safety completely, Private First Class Stetson dashed through enemy fire to aid wounded comrades. He moved them to a bomb crater where they could receive first aid and then single-handedly assaulted a fortified enemy, enemy position while calling for an evac evacuation helicopter for the wounded. While Private First Class Stetson was loading the wounded on the helicopter, it was hit by enemy fire and it crashed. He was critically wounded. In an attempt to shield his comrades, he was critically wounded. But for his actions, Private First Class Randy Stetson was awarded the Silver Star. And we're lucky enough to have him here with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Private First Class Randy Stetson. All I'd like to say is that this is a great honor for me. Uh, I never thought this would ever happen. But I thank you all, especially the Casal family, for what they've done and what they have done in the past. This is a great honor, and most of all, I'm proud to be an American. Thank you. 
Private First Class, Randy Stetson. Thank you, sir. And now for our third honoree tonight. Let me tell you about James Hubbard. James Hubbard, Specialist for United States Army, Vietnam. Mr. Hubbard is the commander of the North Oakland VFW Post 334. On August 17, 1967, he was serving as a fire team leader with Company A, 2nd Battalion, 1st Infantry, in the 196th Light Infantry Brigade on a search and destroy mission in Vietnam. As the fire team crossed a walled off rice paddy, Viet Cong and placed in a trench line opened up on them with intense automatic weapons fire. With complete disregard for his own safety, Specialist Hubbard exposed himself to heavy, to heavy enemy fire to deliver effective fire against their position so that his team members could reach cover. During this encounter, he was wounded, yet he held his ground and continued an aggressive attack on the enemy. The enemy, realizing his effectiveness, unleashed tremendous enemy force. Specialist 4 Hubbard received two more bullet wounds and was severely wounded by a grenade. But he continued his assault. Specialist 4 Hubbard then moved across their lane of fire to a position to bring more accurate and direct fire on the enemy while suffering intensely from bullet wounds. Due to his close combat actions, his platoon was able to maneuver against the numerically superior hostile force and rout them from their entrenchment. And for his actions, Specialist 4 James Hubbard was awarded the Silver Star. Please help me in welcoming Commander James Hubbard. I served in Vietnam, 58,840 men lost their lives in the war in Vietnam. Over 16 million people serving this country have lost their lives, whether it be World War I, II, Korea. Let's not forget those folks, ever. A lot of sacrifices, a lot of wounded warriors went home from the war. They've continued on with their lives, but we never forget those we left behind. It's very important in our society to never, ever forget those that have paid the ultimate price in this life. I do appreciate the South family for giving us the opportunity to speak tonight. And thank you all for being here, uh, especially at with this, with this time uh, with the COVID problems that we do have. But, uh, Go Republicans. We need to shake up this country. We've got a good start. We need to continue. Thank you.